Jasi Houfr se píše jako o kytarové kouzelnici a ona vám něco z toho umění tady ukáže. A opět, jako každý zatím předtím mě upozorňoval na to, že umělci jsou úplně dychtiví potom, abyste se jich ptali, takže křičte, hlaste se a udělejte ten workshop interaktivní, ať je to pro vás i pro ní zajímavý. Jasi Houfr. I didn't hear a word or didn't understand a word you said, but I'll trust you that it was okay. <laughs>
Thank you very much. Okay. I have not decided if I'm going to be sitting or standing. Maybe I'll be standing for now. I got introduced, and as I said, I have no idea what he said, because I'm from Germany, so I can only speak German or English. But just in case, I'm going to introduce myself again. I'm Jesse Hofer, guitar player from Germany, and I'm really, really happy to be here. I know that I played in Prague with my band, I think it was like five years ago. We played in a small chess club in, in the middle of Old Town. I don't even know if you might know it, but it was a lot of fun. And since then, I haven't been back. So I'm really happy that I got invited to be here and that you guys are here sitting in front of me. It's a really honor. Thank you so much for being here. Do any of you know who I am? Does anyone know a bit about my history or... If not, if it's cool for you, I would just go back a few years and maybe talk through how I got started to play guitar, how I ended up being here. If that's cool for you, maybe that's like the first thing we'll do. Um, I started playing guitar when I was 12 years old, which to me is a little late. I don't know, how, when did you guys start? Have we like young prodigy kids that were lucky enough to start at age five or something? Yeah? Who? Wow. Lucky guy. You're really lucky. <laughs> so as said, I started when I was 12 and I felt like it was already really late to start. But um, the first time I actually touched the guitar, it was like heaven and a whole... It's hard to even explain. I mean, you probably know it if you're a guitar player and if you're passionate about it. I picked up a guitar and I was like, this is it, this is it, I want to do it all day, every day for the rest of my life. And this happened like, yeah, as I said, the first time I grabbed the guitar. And I got a guitar teacher and I was so lucky that he introduced me to Steve Vai. Like, let's say four months or not even half a year after I started playing guitar, he introduced me to Steve Vai. Do we have Steve Vai fans? I'm sure. Raise your hands. Yeah. <laughs> The other ones are probably on the Joe Satriani side. <laughs> okay, so he introduced me to Steve Vai and I was really lucky and he showed me um, a video of the Life at the Astoria Lawn DVD which had Virtual Donati on drums and it's, um, he showed me Whispering a Prayer. And when I saw that I was like, I didn't even know you could do stuff like that with the guitar. Before that for me guitar playing was like, let's say Survivor, Eye of the Tiger, you're the, the rhythm person. And hearing Steve Vai, I was like, wow, you can really like replace vocals and have the guitar be a voice in itself and be really emotional and touch people. And that was a new world for me and it grabbed me and I was like, I want to be able to play like that. So I started practicing guitar. It's the, the typical story actually. I started practicing for 10 hours, sometimes even plus, I was really crazy. So I was playing all day, all night. I tried to not go to school whenever possible and just sit in my room, sit in my bedroom and try to play the Steve Vai songs. And that's actually like one of the most important messages that I could give to you if you're a guitar player is that, and he actually said it, you have to get out of your comfort zone. And it is really important to like, at whatever point you are at as a guitar player, if you like, profile or amateur, whatever, you have to set yourself big goals and you have to get out of your comfort zone. And for me, getting out of my comfort zone at that part, playing guitar for like half a year, was trying to play the Steve Vai music, which is kind of crazy, but I was just like, I was so, I'm gonna be able to do it. And I was very positive about it. I kind of felt like, I know I'm gonna be able to do it. I don't know how long it's gonna take, if it's gonna take two years to learn one song, I'm fine with it because I'm having fun playing the guitar. So a big message and a big tip for you guys. Um, set yourself big goals. Of course, it's also very important to have small goals because otherwise if you just go for the big goal that's far away and might be one year from where you're at, it might get frustrating to some people. So that's why I said like have short goals have things that you feel like, okay, if I practice it, this, if I learn it in a week from now, I'll be able to play it. And then have the big goals that's one year from now and work on that too. And then you have like this big thing coming up. And if you 
go beyond what you can do, that's how you grow and that's how you get better. So back to my story, playing guitar 10 hours a day for a few years and then I actually quit school, which you shouldn't do, maybe. I'm not sure, I'm always careful when I mention that and I know I have kids in the audience because this is of course not the, the best way to do it, but for me it was, only for the reason that I knew what I was gonna do. I was like, I'm gonna be a musician, I'm gonna be a guitar player for the rest of my life, so I don't need any more education that would bring me into a normal life situation. And so, as said, I quit school. I was not even 16, and then I had the luxury of being able to study at a college of music in Germany at that age and that was really good because I had all the time in the world to play guitar whenever I want and, and learn music and um, from there on I had the big dream to go to Berklee College of Music. I'm just checking maybe was anyone at Berklee ever? Was it a dream of anyone? Is it a dream for anyone to go there at a place? No? Okay, for me it was and um, then I auditioned for a scholarship and I got it because I played Freak Show Access from Steve Vai, which is like this, if you know it, it's a seven minute guitar extravaganza. It's really crazy, it's really difficult to play. And I think I worked on that for honestly over a year to be able to play that one song. But I felt like if I'm gonna be able to, hi there. If I'm, hey Larry, good to see you. <laughs> if I'm gonna be able to play that song, I was kind of like, big ballsy going into the audition, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get it because no one's gonna play a song like that. So I have, the, I have the place to go and study in Boston. So I did get it and I went to, to Berkeley for one year, which was the best time of my life. And I can only recommend it to the younger people that are in the audience. If you still feel like you, if you wanna become a professional musician and you wanna make it a living, it's really important and it's a good way to go to study music, not only for what you learn, but it's more about all the networking that happens around that. And if I'm at the point of networking, I might as well give you this as another big advice. Apart from a guitar player, it's whatever you do. If you're a musician, networking is so important and it's half of, it's like, it's as important as, of, as good as you are as a guitar player, as the people you know. And I got really lucky along the way that comes after studying that I got to meet really great people. And I actually skipped an important person that I met when I was 14. And that was, of course, Steve Vai. And it's like, I think the, the biggest part of my story is that um, Steve Vai invited me to join him on stage when I was 14. So I was gu playing guitar for two years. And... Steve Vai invited me up on stage in my hometown and asked me to play a song with him, which was like crazy. And that was the, the first time my name dropped up on the internet somewhere. Is it cool if I'm talking in this? Yeah, okay, you just let me know. And whenever you have a question, by the way, you can always interrupt me and just go right in between and ask your question. Okay, so yeah, I skipped back to being 14, playing with Steve Vai and that was amazing and since then we've been in touch and through Steve I got to know so many people that are in the business and as I said that's like just as important as being able to be a good guitar player and be a professional musician is the people you know and the people you meet along the way and then of course it's your attitude too towards those people and towards anyone you meet and anyone you interact with you have to be a nice, nice and cool person in order to be able to be a really good professional musician. So I said, I went to Berkeley, I was there for a year and then I came back home to Germany and I was so ready to go out and finally like get out of my bedroom and make music with other people and have a band. And I started writing my first songs and I wrote my first album. So I think I was like 20 by that time and I recorded it, I produced it. It was a lot of work, but it was so much fun. And whatever is on that album, and by the way, if you're interested, I have my CDs with me. So you, of course, after the workshop, you can come to me and ask for CDs. Um, so I produced that album, I released it, and I was looking for a first band 
to go out and play shows. And I got really lucky because, of course, with the networking thing, I met the right people at the right time. And I found people that are in my band for eight years now. So it's the same people that I met back in the day when I started playing. And um, it's amazing if you have a family like that of musicians that support you along the way. And then we got really lucky again because of that Steve Weigig, the first show that I played with my music, was in front of 600 people in my hometown. And it was like, I was a little 20-year-old girl, very nervous, and I was standing on stage like this for two hours, and I was playing my show, and it was too much to take at the time. So I was not the kind of person that just goes up on stage and is like, yeah, I'm ready to rock. I was very shy, and I'm still learning. It's To me, it's a process. It's... It takes some work to be able to stand in a position like this and be comfortable, at least for me. And um, that's in, in case if you're in a music. Do we have musicians here that have a band that are, that go out and play? Raise your hand, maybe. Okay, it's not a lot. Do you feel comfortable on stage? Maybe I'll ask you. Or no, no. <laughs> okay, but I can tell you, it's like it takes time. Just. Just be able to play a lot. And if I look back, I think over the years I played so many hundred shows and that brought me to the place that I'm I'm still not always really comfortable and I still get nervous and that's good and it's important, but it's it's kind of nice to be able to enjoy yourself while you're up on stage and playing. So as I said, I, I had my first band, I had my first album, and then many years passed and I just did that same thing. I wrote another album and I wrote another album, and I had my band, and we played a lot of shows, we played all through Europe, and then um, suddenly, I'm like just thinking that I'm not missing out on anything important, but like the last three years, a lot of stuff happened for me. For example, I got to um, open up the Formula One in, in Spielberg, Austria. I think it was two years ago, and to play the Austrian national anthem. And I didn't even know, I was like, I was just playing and I didn't realize that like, this was a worldwide thing and people could see it on TV. And I learned another really important lesson and it's actually what I just talked about is that if you stand like this and you're on worldwide television, it's not gonna work. You have to be like, that's, so you have to kind of work on your performance. You have to be able to like touch the people and you have to look at people. So that was a work process for me to be able to be there and like make the performance in a way that it feels over the top for me because then it's just right for whoever's gonna watching. And then out of that, I feel like I got another great opportunity. And I have like, at the moment, I have two amazing jobs as a guitar player in Germany playing for really big acts. And just two weeks ago, we played in front of like, you won't believe it, 130,000 people. And I can actually tell you, it was too big. Because for me, I, I love seeing people. I love being able to connect and look people in the eyes. And being in that place, it's like you don't see anyone. It was really big. But I'm just really happy that um, everything I did brought me to the place that I am right now. And that I'm able to work and live as a musician. And... Um, yeah, so that's who I am, that's what I do. I still, of course, write music. I'm about to release a fourth um, album. And yeah, I'm happy to be a musician. Do you guys have any questions? No questions? Do you want... Yeah. Well, honestly, there's... No technique I know of. Of course, people tell you you can do breathing techniques, and I did try that, but for me, being right before a show, it doesn't work for some reason. So I could try to meditate and do breathing work, but it doesn't work. But for me, it's always the same thing. I'm nervous, let's say, like 30 minutes before the show, and until I go on, sh on the stage and start playing. And most of the time, it only takes, let's say, one minute or maybe one song of a show. And I know, okay, this works, I feel comfortable, I know what I do, I, I'm, I've been here for 10 years or whatever. And then that goes away by itself. So the best thing is to just don't even worry about it and ignore it. Just be like, okay, I'm nervous right now, but I know if I feel comfortable up there and 
if nothing goes wrong, I will feel comfortable and then everything is fine. But there, of course, are situations when I'm on stage and something breaks, like a cable breaks and your monitor goes off and you don't hear anything, then of course it's, it's a different situation. But then it's also a process. The more you learn, you also learn to be able to deal with situations like that. Let's say if I was playing a show six years ago and something breaks on stage or I do a big mistake, everyone will know. And now, whatever happens here, you won't know because I learned from all the years of experience to keep this to myself and be like, that. there's still people, they want to see you and they want to enjoy, so just try to keep it to yourself and that's part of being a professional musician too. Yeah. Hey. Nice to meet you too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, my plan actually was to be there for four years. Um, one of the reasons that I left after one year is that um, living expenses in Boston are really, really high. And then, like, my scholarship was 80% of the tuition for the school. But so I had to pay the living costs and I had to pay the books and everything. And Berkeley is a really, really expensive place to be. And I had the feeling that, let's say, 80 to 90% of the people that are at Berkeley, they, they're not worrying about money. They're not there on a scholarship, they just, they're fine. And the other 20% is the amazing musicians that get like a full scholarship where everything's taken care of. So I was kind of in between and it was okay. And then I had the request and the chance to be playing in bands. But as an international student, you're not allowed to earn money. They're very strict about that, so the choices would have been the bands that I play in are not allowed to take any money for themselves too, for me to be able to play with them, or I can't play. And then I was like, since I studied in Germany before, I had three years of studying already. So it was those two parts, but Berkeley, as I said, it was the best time of my life, and now looking back, I think I would have said, well, let's do another year because you still have all the rest of your life to go out on stage and play. But at the time I was so like, well, okay, it's really expensive, everything, and I'm, I could have the chance to play with bands, but I'm not allowed. So I kind of like, I had the hunger to, to go out and be able to play. So that's why it was only one year. Any other questions? Yeah. That's a really cool question. I started playing a guitar that probably no one knows, and the brand is called Cox. It's like C-O-X-X, -X, which is a weird name for a guitar, I'm just thinking now. <laughs> but I just saw it in a local guitar store in Germany, and it was a really typical thing, really cheap guitar. And the second guitar I got was, of course, the Stevai Ibanez, the, the cheaper model. I played that for a few years, and then when I studied music, I got into Fender. I bought myself a Fender Telecaster, Fender Stratocaster, all that. Then I discovered Soar guitars, and the people that know me might know that I had this neon drip swirl guitar, which is a really cool guitar from Soar. And I ended up with Ibanez, especially for two reasons, and one was that um, the artist in relation person has been working with me for other stuff, for guitar strings for many, many years. So he's been in touch with me all the time and he was always a great supporter. And he came to me one day and he always knew that I'm not the big Archie fan, that I was like, as I said, I played Stratocaster and all that. And he called me and he said, we have this new guitar series and it's the AZ, or I don't know how you would pronounce it here. Um, so yeah. This is a new new series from Ibanez, and I was like, well, okay, send it over. I would love to try it, and if it feels good, maybe we can get in touch and, and talk about a dealership. And so they gave me this guitar, and I don't know if you ever got to play an ASAC guitar, because they feel so comfortable, because it's like, the Archies have like the really thin neck, and I'm not a fan of that. I want something, because I'm not just a shredder, I also play blues, I play some jazz, I play funk, and I have a lot of projects that I'm involved in that it's just, and if I have that shred neck, 
I don't even feel like I can get in a bluesy mode and be like, oh yeah, it's not on. Why is it not working? Okay. So it, it wouldn't work on an Archie for me. And they sent over the exact guitar and I was like, this is really cool because this has, for me, the, the perfect neck shape. And that was one reason that I was like, okay, now this is finally an awesome guitar that works for me from Ibanez. And the other reason is the networking thing again. And for me being a person that in the last years, I play so many shows where I need backup guitars. And maybe I need three of the same guitars just in case anything happens and I know I'm on TV and or they're filming a DVD and something breaks, I just need to be safe. And that, of course, works if you're working with a company and if you know the company supports you. And Ibanez has been giving a great support for me over the last years. And I can just call them and be like, I need an acoustic guitar tomorrow for a show. And they will send out an acoustic guitar. And this is the second reason. And it's, yeah, they probably have. I haven't even, like, I just arrived and I came here for the workshop. So I haven't, haven't even seen... Um, the place, but I'm sure you can try the ASAP models and it's definitely worth it because I love them and since they brought them out, I think I already own five of them, four or five, they're just good, but not for my money back. <laughs> Any other questions? Do you want me to play another song or is there anything? Yeah? Okay. Okay, I actually, I think I'm gonna play a song from my debut album because that's one of the, the most well-known song of mine that's on the internet. And while I'm saying that, I just want to remind you that I'm also going to be playing at, I don't even know where the stage is, but there's another stage. You guys probably know you because you've been here um, throughout the day. And I'm going to be playing a few more songs there later. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
thank you so much. So we have three minutes left. Any more questions? No more questions. Doesn't make sense to start another topic. Just as an advice for you, um, whatever you do, be positive and it takes some work to put in to, to get something and somewhere, but um, just go for it. As I said, we have CDs with us. We'll bring them out here so you can come up and um, check out what we got and then I'll be playing later. I don't actually know the exact time, but I'll be playing at the other stage. A few more songs of mine. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much to the team of the festival for having us and looking forward to hearing what Larry is going to do. And yeah, have a rest, have a good rest of the day. Thank you so much. <laughs>